Is the Hear Me Gen Suite a setup that is too heavy, especially if you're planning to upgrade to direct drive to print faster on your 3D printer? We discussed this in a recent interview on this channel with Andy Mediaman 3D Soderberg, the creator of the Hear Me Master Suite. This is part of a bigger playlist, which I've also linked down in the description. In those videos, we talk about how the Hear Me Suite came to life, what's new with Hear Me Gen 6, the new part cooling ducts, design principles and compromises, as well as the new monetization of the documentation through Patreon. And finally, the future of Hear Me, what new things are coming. So let's jump right into the interview to hear whether the Hear Me suite is too heavy or not. Maybe let's uh, let's think about um, the setup itself. I got some questions from the community. So, for example, when I, I showed my first version or of my Ender 3 v2 upgrade with the Hear Me Gen 5, uh, a few people were commenting like, how is this not uh, slowing you down because it's a heavy setup? So in my case, of course, it's like I have the direct drive. Obviously, Hear Me can also be used for Bowden setups. But yeah. what's your experience with, uh, with using this heavier yeah. setups with dual fans uh, printing? speeds for example yeah. so speeds. again you know everybody's going to make their own choices if, if mm. you want to do speed benchy tests right uh everybody's doing speed benchy tests or doing doing bowden right or mm. or they're using the new sherpa micro you know to really get the weight down because it's all about moving that you know inertia of, of the hot end around Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for most everybody else, if you're not doing speed benchy tests, trying to do 2000 millimeters a second, you're not going to get it on a small bed anyway. The acceleration just doesn't get you there. The weight, if, you know, having a direct drive to get the benefits of doing everything from flexible filaments uh, to getting a, a, a more accurate part because you can reduce the retraction. The mm -hmm. weight is not that big a deal. The weight for most 3D printers having this sort of thing on there, you know, give you an example. Everybody seems to think that the Prusa, I do too, is a great printer. It's a it's mm -hmm. a tank. You build it right and it just works and works and works. And for most of mine, I've not done, well, it's not true. I've done only one upgrade to all my Prusas is that they're on a Wham Bam um, Mutant, which is the ability to change out the hot end very quickly. So that's I the see. only yeah. mod I've done there. But Prusas are all direct drive with the, the uh, extruder and motor on it. Yeah. And that weight is not a problem. So the plastic of the Hero Me and the two fans is tiny, tiny weight compared to what you have in the way of a, of a direct drive. I so, mean, there's there's obviously other options that are lightweight. So the Orbiter, for example. Yep. And I mean, there is generally kind of a renaissance of the direct drive. So like when I started, the direct drive was the standard basically and then Bowden came and like every other printer that came out uh, had a Bowden setup. I, I honestly had nothing but problems with Bowden unless uh, until I switched to an all metal hot end by Bontech like on the the Ender series and I did this also with the the Hero Me upgrade. Since then I didn't have any uh, problems anymore with clogging but since switching to direct drive there was zero issues anymore yeah. so yeah. I, I think it's the future I, don't think, I really don't think weight is a problem um yeah again, unless you're and going I'm after... printing standard speeds right i have these projects going where i'm i don't worry if i have to print something 24 hours i could print it in 16 hours but the results weren't as consistent so to say yeah. so, so didn't have printer to... on this I, I run this between 100 and 150 millimeters per second speeds all the time with 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 no problems um, mm -hmm. And then there's times where I'm, I'm printing it at, you know, 60 or 70 millimeters a second. Again, it depends on, you know, what the accuracy I need, you know, obviously what size nozzle I'm using, a bunch mm -hmm. of different variables you get into. But this big, bulky, you know, with with the LGX and and, and uh, a stepper motor is not a problem. Yeah. So one of, one of the other things we didn't talk about uh, on the Hear Me that is kind of a, a an Easter egg, the bottom is now also a standard. So... I was I was thinking about like what like even in the first version or, or the Hero Me Five I was wondering what are like these two yeah. holes for because yeah. I didn't see any purpose for I think it was already here in this one yeah yeah here it is so so what, what that is, it is for is um, you know everybody and his brother who are doing fancy printers there and they want to run them faster they're going after those speed benchy tests. They use a um, little thing called a, a ADXL345 accelerometer. And so that oh, is the mount okay. point for this little tiny PCB 
to do the accelerometer for Clipper. It's, it's designed for use mm -hmm. for the uh, shaping to, you know, to make the performance of that printer so much better. Um, I expect Marlin in some future version will do something that could take advantage of this as well. But, mm -hmm. but uh, this is used by people who run Clipper. And so, yeah, so that's the amount. And then alternately- Is this also an M3? No, M2.5. Uh, that's why it's smaller. I was like, okay, yeah. why is this so small? Does yeah, it fit the M3? Smaller screws for that small PCB board. If someone goes to my profile page on Thingiverse and you can see my collections, there mm -hmm. is a Hero Me collection with mm -hmm. uh, over 600 pieces. Whenever somebody lets me know they've done a remix or whatever, I add it to that collection. So it just gets bigger and bigger. Um, and so there's a guy that did a adapter mount for the 4010 fan Mm -hmm. that fits after the fan is on and is a little uh, upright blade that doesn't doesn't block the air coming into the fan, but allows you to mount the ADS, ADXL345 right here. Uh, so there's a little adapter that if you don't want to put it underneath, there's there's one there. So there's a couple of different ways to, to mount that acceler accelerometer. That was part four of my interview series with Andy Soderberg about the Hiromi Suite. In the next part, which I linked here for you, we are talking about design principles of the Hiromi Suite, some compromises that come along with that, and Annie's other part cooling system that is a little less known. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next video.